Hey there, everybody, it's Ryan from Cataclysm Now, and uh, tonight it's uh, July 1st, so what better game to play uh, than a Gettysburg title, uh, specifically from Clash of Giants um, Civil War. I've got the map already set up. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It's a meeting engagement, so there's not a lot of counters um, on the map. Got the classic situation of uh, Gamble and uh, Devon, those two brigades of Buford's division um, opposing uh, Heath's division, the Archer and Davis brigades along the Chamberber Chambersburg Pike. Um, and then off to the south here, we have um, Wadsworth's division with the Iron Brigade in color. Um, victory in this game is determined by either um, a couple conditions. The first, um, if the Confederates can exit 10 brigades off map between the Tawny Town Road and the Baltimore Pike. It's all the way down here in the south. So if they can exit uh, brigade 10 brigades this way, it's considered an automatic victory. Another way to get an automatic victory is to have, um, to exceed a certain number of points. Points are generally um, generated by casualties, but it's basically 40 points plus any uh, delay victory points that the other side um, has. Um, obviously, no one starts with any points. So um, in, in, in the case that an automatic victory is not triggered um, by the end of day three, July 3rd, um, count up all the points and that includes um, the, the geographical locations here. Um, we've got a little round top, Wheatfield, Peach Orchard, Cemetery Ridge, Cemetery Hill, Culp's Hill, and Cemetery Ridge. So I won't go too much into the circumstances around the battle. Most everyone knows why and how um, the Battle of Gettysburg was fought. Um, so yeah, I'll check in um, from turn to turn. It is chip pull. So I'll, I'll jump in and show um, what's interesting as the narrative develops. All right, we're about to have our first uh, combat here. Um, the There's a bit of scripting on the first turn. Uh, the first chit that is pulled or played, um, you're able to move uh, Archer and Davis. They move forward up um, and try to engage Buford's cavalry, uh, but the they were able to fall back, um, retreat before combat. Um, in addition, the second chit that was pulled or played um, scripted uh, is uh, for the Union First Corps uh, for that to be able to move. So uh, they rolled rather high on their um, their movement chart over here uh, because they had a modifier. So they had 10 movement points. So <clears throat> I was able to take the Iron Brigade um, and move it up to the uh, northern crest of McPherson's Ridge uh, with Cutler uh, closely behind. And then um, Baxter and Paul of Robinson's division, uh, they were able to come up south and um, are currently in the town of Gettysburg. But uh, the next actual chit that was pulled was for uh, Heath's division. Uh, so Brockenborough and Pettigrew, um, they came up and they're currently uh, at the Spangler house or farm. And then we are going to be, do assaults, um, Archer against Gamble and Davis uh, versus Devon. Devin and Gamble decided to stay and fight. Um, both um, brigades, because they're split up into two, uh, there's a Gamble A uh, and a Gamble B and a Devin A and a Devin B, A, a and B. Um, but two, I guess they're Demi brigades, or the two, um, both Gamble and Devin each took, um, they, they lost a brigade of cavalry. So it gave the Confederates two victory points there. However, they um, sur they survived their TER check. So they basically have to roll equal to or under um, uh, the rating here. So for them, it's four. And in addition, uh, Davis is, has a question mark here. They don't have one. It's because they're a green unit. And you roll for the first time they ever fight in combat to see what their quality actually is. They will roll quite well. Um, it was a five, which means their TER is a... Is a four, but um, these two remaining brigades didn't budge, uh, and then these two didn't um, take any losses either, so they're currently locked here. Um, that was the Confederates' one combat um, in this game. 
you there's no chit to pull to initiate combat, as in uh, I think as present in Battle Hymn um, by Compass Games, but in this case, you do get to elect when to attack. Um, so they can't attack anymore, but that's that's okay, just because they don't have any more combat chits to pull. So Heath is fully engaged here. Um, so we'll keep pulling chits and um, see what happens. Okay, that's the end of turn one, late morning. Wadsworth's division um, left McPherson's Ridge and uh, slammed into Archer's Brigade, causing it to, to fall back. Uh, but the Iron Brigade and the Cutler uh, didn't advance. I uh, wouldn't need to stay close to interdict the road here. So with that, we will move on to turn two, uh, which is uh, early afternoon. And uh, there are only... The only Union reinforcements are four brigades. Um, we got Double Day's Division and uh, Steinwehr. Steinbear uh, coming on. Currently, we've got two brigades in the actual town of Gettysburg, again from uh, the First Corps. And then we have very slowly uh, elements of the Ninth Corps uh, moving down uh, the Emmitsburg Road and the Tawny Town Road. Now, for the Confederates, they have a wealth of reinforcements coming uh, the next turn. Um, Early's Division and Pender's Division. Um, and then Following uh, late afternoon, uh, turn three, they'll have Anderson's division coming on. And then there will be an, another wave of uh, Union reinforcements. So basically, the Confederates are going to want to overwhelm the Union forces here and then um, see if they can seize the ground, perhaps um, just uh, south of Gettysburg. So what's interesting about playing... Uh, in a way, a highly scripted game where we just all know uh, the story beats so well. Um, but I'm going to have the Confederates focus on inflicting casualties and uh, seizing Cemetery Ridge and potentially um, uh, Cemetery Ridge and Cemetery Hill. A bit of a lull in the uh, early afternoon of uh, July 1st. A lot of movement here um, through the different chip poles. Um, had Wadsworth's division fall back um, to the relative safety of the uh, ridges. Um, had the rest of the division, um, well, another division, it's Doubleday's division and Robinson's division, um, make their way up the uh, Fairfield Road here. And they are occupying a Seminary Ridge. Uh, we've got uh, the Ninth Corps slowly but surely uh, concentrating around Cemetery Hill, um, moving... Uh, they rolled fairly, no, they actually uh, rolled fairly well in terms of moving up, so they're concentrating here. But the larger issue is, uh, embarrassingly, um, I didn't have any uh, cavalry screening uh, the Harrisburg Road, uh, which is where Early's Division came in. It could have been worse, um, because Rhodes um, was supposed to come down uh, the Mamasburg Road here, um, uh, entry hex C, but the game utilizes um, variable entry uh, hexes or uh, entry turns. So you roll die to see not only does it arrive on time, um, one through four is normal, five it's delayed a turn, six it's delayed two turns. So there's that nice sense of uh, variability. You know, odds are your units are going to arrive um, as they did historically. But in addition, if even if they arrive on time, you roll uh, to see if they come on. Um, a different entry hex. So it's possible that they show up um, elsewhere. That being said, Road was only delayed a turn. Um, but Early was able to scoot down. I was wondering whether or not to deploy them in the town of Gettysburg, but I think they were better suited to threatening um, the Union positions here. Um, the next chip that was pulled when we're down to the last ones, uh, Pender rolled terribly for their move, uh, only four movement points. Uh, he was able to roll a five or a six. Uh, his division would have been able to close in and um, attack Wadsworth's position. Uh, but currently, as it stands, uh, we're going to do combat here. 
Uh, and we have um, Pettigrew, Brockenboro, and Archer um, attacking Cutler. And then we've got Davis attacking um, Brigades of uh, Devon and Gamble. Heath was able to push um, Cutler uh, off the hill and um, sent him retreating back uh, um, the northern end of Seminary Ridge. Um, Davis was able to eliminate um, one of Gamble's uh, brigades. Uh, Devin uh, was able to actually fall back here, uh, occupying the, um, the ridge along with Cutler. And then Pettigrew took a step loss and was forced back. Uh, but uh, he or Archer and Brockenboro um, passed their uh, TER rolling and were able to occupy uh, the position formerly held by Cutler. So at that point, that is the end of uh, turn three, um, early afternoon. We'll be going on to late afternoon uh, with Anderson's division potentially arriving, uh, but Rhodes' division um, absolutely arriving. Um, it's hard to say where they, where things stand. Um, obviously I think the next turn will be really crucial for the Confederates because they'll have more forces coming on and the Union will have to do, um, with what they have. Interesting about command control in this game, you activate one brigade of a formation and then they, the rest of them have to be within four hexes. Uh, to be activated. Now, even if they're not within command range, they can still move their regular allotment, but I don't think they can enter zones of control and they can't initiate combat. Um, so we're going to have to concentrate the first core um, if they're going to be able to coordinate any counter attacks. Um, and maybe, so you run into this issue where they may be in good positions, but they may not, but for, for defense, but they're without, they're out of command range. So I don't know if it would be worth pulling the Iron Brigade back or pulling up Double Days in Robinson's division to help hold. They also have to deal with um, the presence of Early here. Um, so it just depends on whether or not uh, the Ninth Corps will be able to move up and um, threaten Early's positions or, or hold. Because what we don't want, um, which was the concern on the first day of Gettysburg, um, the Union forces that were present being eliminated um, and being pressured. So they still have to fight a delaying action. Um, yeah, it's going to be tough. So let's go ahead and uh, on to turn three and um, see what shits we pull. Things are getting interesting. Uh, first and foremost, Anderson's division was delayed two turns. Um, so they will not be arriving until... Uh, the night of uh, July 1st, we did net the Confederates two delay VPs. So they're up to three delay VPs, which means that the Union needs to get 43 um, points to trigger an automatic victory. The Ninth Corps was able to move up uh, into Gettysburg um, and potentially threaten Early's uh, left, but before that, Early had moved into position to threaten uh, Cutler, and then Heath was going to move up uh, and going to attack Buford. Now, the Confederates chose not to launch their attack because they, um, depending on the die roll, could get Pender into position. Um, however, um, uh, the United States forces are being a little bold here. The First Corps was pulled before Pender. Pender's the last one in the cup. Um, so, actually, how did I? Actually, that's illegal. Those can't be stacked. So I'll move them back here. And double day will be here. Okay, that's better. Um, you can't stack two units uh, from a different division with, I can't mix the brigades up. Anyway, Wadsworth, uh, the Iron Brigade, uh, is moving from McPherson's Ridge and is going to be, um, I don't know if they'll be attacking, that is tempting with a flank attack. 
know if it's better to attack uh, Pettigrew or if it's going to be better to attack um, Archer and Brock and Burrow. Anyway, I'll make that decision here soon. So it's risky in so much that depending on how this plays out, Pender will be able to close and uh, attack um, the Iron Brigade here. So um, it's going to be consequential um, exchanges of fire here, um, and we'll see what happens. Well, that was a mixed result uh, for the U.S. forces. They uh, were able to eliminate uh, Brock and Rowe's uh, brigade. Archer held firm, uh, as did uh, Devon's brigade here, but um, the Iron Brigade um, took a step loss, netting the... Um, the uh, Confederates another victory point. Um, actually, the the uh, Union um, got a, another victory point as well for the elimination of Brockenborough. But um, the Iron Brigade, um, to show to reflect its historical status as being a sort of an elite um, a unit, has a, a TER rating of five, which meaning it can only take a step loss. Um, on a six, that's without modifiers. So obviously if you have combat where uh, the odds uh, are two, three, four, higher um, to one, then that, that number can be modified. But in this case, they uh, rolled a six and um, took a step loss. Um, so right now, uh, the union position seems to be mildly precarious. Uh, we'll pull um, Pender's chit um, and see what they can do. Don't count the Iron Brigade out. So Pender's full division, we have four uh, brigades, uh, Scales, Lane, or I'm sorry, three brigades, Scales, Lane, and Thomas, uh, with Perrin um, close behind. Attacked, uh, this is a, a six to one. Um, so usually with the, the combat resolution, you roll for the defenders first. And then you roll for the attackers, and on the higher end of the combat uh, results table, I'll show you here, there's a uh, attacker loss limit, so you only have to check. Um, so for 1 to 3, 1 to 2, 1 to 1, you have to check all of them as it goes over. Obviously here, um, the Confederates don't have to check uh, any of theirs. Um, also, um, and because there is none, there is uh, no modifier. But essentially, the Iron Brigade, they rolled a two, um, even with the, the um, negative modifier. It's a positive. It's adding to their die. Uh, it still is a five, so it clears their uh, tactical efficiency rating. So they may have taken some losses, but that five, um, that's a tough knock to crack for a brigade to have a five. Um, so the Iron Brigade does hold there, uh, delaying Pender um, and, and, and living to fight on at least until the next turn. So we're going to go on to turn four, which is the evening of July 1st. It's the last um, round of combat that the Confederates uh, and the Union are going to have, but the Confederates really need to press... Um, I mean, historically speaking, um, you know, they were potentially already the threatening um, Culp's Hill. Uh, so the Union is in a pretty good position, um, and we'll see what we can do um, next turn. There's an abundance of Union reinforcements, and um, Johnson's division also arrives. The Confederates really have to give it all their go. Um, there is a special uh, command marker. Um, uh, Robert E. Lee. It's not actually in the chip pull cup, but at the beginning of every turn, you roll a die, and on a one, Robert E. Lee, you can play his chip in lieu of another con any Confederate division chip that's pulled. Um, and what's nice about the special command markers is that you can initiate combat outside of the normal one time. So it is 
through those uh, special command markers, you're able to initiate combat multiple times. So I pulled Heath's um, division. Um, oh, I also forgot to mention that um, at the end of every every turn, if you have units that are adjacent to other uh, enemy units that are on higher elevation, uh, then you have to fall back for um, uh, for hexes. I think the the sort of intent of that is that you just you you break off. You you, you have to assault the position and knock them from um, the hill or the position. And if you don't, then you have to fall back. So Heath had to fall back. So they have to reclose that distance. Um, to uh, even engage with the Union forces here. So uh, in lieu of activating them, uh, Lee is going to be activating early. Now Early's chit is still in the same cup, um, so effectively they're going to be able to fight um, twice. Um, so we have uh, Hoax Brigade is going to be uh, attacking the Devon here, and then we've got Smith, Gordon, and Hayes um, taking on uh, the, the remains of Wadsworth's, uh, Wadsworth's division. Well, that was costly for the Confederates. Um, they were able to eliminate Cutler's brigade, uh, but the Iron Brigade held. They, uh, Hayes, uh, took a step loss and so did Smith, uh, but Gordon held and held, and then, the. Uh, the remnants of Buford's division fell back, um, and Hoke assumed the position there. So yeah, I mean, the, the are, these are ratings of threes, but even with the, the additional modifier, um, they still took losses. Yeah, the Confederates um, just pulled Pender's uh, division uh, in you know, 10 movement points because he rolled a six. Um, so the Confederates will be initiating another round of combat, their standard combat. Heath won't be able to move up. Uh, Rhodes is most likely out of position um, to do any good in terms of combat, and then Johnson certainly is. So um, this is as good a time as any. So the attacks... Um, Essentially, uh, Early and Pender are going to be launching against Wadsworth here, trying to kick them off um, Seminary Ridge, or, or the, the northern part of Seminary Ridge. And then we are going to go uh, Lane and Scales of Pender's Division will be attacking Doubleday's Division Stone and Rowley. Um, it is... Actually, that is going to be a 1-2 to two attack. Maybe better because that is higher. All right, there's victory points, or it's a victory hex underneath there, so maybe more costly, cost effective, or, or, or safer for Pender um, to hit Robinson instead of Double D. Anyway, uh, we will resolve these combats and see where we stand. Okay, the uh, Iron Brigade uh, succumbed to the attacks of, uh, of Early and Pender. So Wadsworth Division is going to be completely destroyed. Uh, we had uh, uh, elements of uh, Early's Division occupy the space. And then Pender, Scales and Lane shifted to the north actually to strike the northern part of Seminary Ridge. Um, they wound up eliminating, or not eliminating, uh, forcing back Baxter's brigade, and then uh, at a cost of forcing back uh, their own uh, lane brigade uh, with a step loss there. Um, so Seminary Ridge is contested. The Union defense is collapsing here in the north, um, but the Confederates won't be able to launch any more attacks. So. Currently, where victory points stand, um, the Confederates have three delay victory points and eight uh, casualty inflicted ones. Um, eight, um, so that's 11 total to the Union's six. So nearly double the points. So the Confederates are doing okay in terms of points. 
um, but they're not pushing on those geographical locations. Um, so, yeah, we'll pull. We still have that. We've got five chits left, uh, and then we'll go into the night phase, uh, which will be consequential in terms of more units arriving on the board and in terms of positioning um, to see where uh, things stand uh, on the morning of July 2nd. All right, the Union is looking uh, ahead to the second day. They uh, wind up pulling back the Ninth Corps. They were here in the town of Gettysburg, but they wind up pulling them back um, so they can start organizing the defenses of Cemetery Ridge and Culp's Hill and Cemetery Hill. Um, so the Ninth Corps is going to be assigned the task of, well, they all have pretty low ratings, but since it's on the eastern end of the battlefield, they're going to be tasked with holding um, Culp's Hill um, in, in this general area uh, of what will be the fish hook. And then the 12th Corps, I think because they're already in position, they'll take responsibility for Cemetery Ridge and Cemetery Hill. And because there will be no combat next um, turn, since it'll be a night turn, um, Double day um, and Robinson will be able to withdraw. Now, there is a possibility that the um, Confederates will be able to surround them because there is a um, surrender rule where if you can't uh, trace a line of communication during the night phase, then the uh, units. Uh, surrender. So I guess there there is a chance there. Um, but we'll see. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead into the night turn. Um, large elements of Longstreet's Corps arrive, uh, and then we have Anderson. Anderson probably, since it was delayed two turns, it was probably a big, uh, had a big impact, because Anderson would have come on. Be, yeah, there would have been more. So the Union didn't do, do too bad, um, but we'll go into the night turn, the last turn for July 1st, and uh, see where the final dispositions are before we head into July 2nd. Okay, there was an interesting uh, night turn. Both McClaws and Hood were delayed two turns, so they will not be arriving until um, the late morning of July second. They're not on the board there. There's a lot of brigades that are not present. The good thing is that the Confederates now have seven delay victory points, which means for the Union to win, they need to inflict 47 uh, casualties. And at this point, they've only done three. Because um, during the night phase, you can withhold a um, command chit for uh, the division or the corps. If you withhold it, at the end of the turn, you get to um, replenish a single step. Um, so I did that for three of them, uh, which cut into the Union VPs. So it's right now it's at three victory points for the Union and um, 15 uh, for the Confederates. So they are winning, ha winning handedly. Um, actually, take that back, I forgot to do. So there is a step where if any of Buford's counters survive, um, they are added. Uh, let me double check here. So at the end of turn seven, the Union player also gets one VP for each full brigade. There are two brigades, two units each. So no victory points there. So actually, yep, it's just three. So the Confederates are winning, winning handily on the first day, um, but uh, there's still uh, two more days um, to battle. So at this point, um, the to win an automatic victory, the Confederates would have to get uh, forty. So they're nearly halfway there. So the Union really need to inflict some casualties. Good news for the Union, though, is they were well semi-good news. They were able to extract the rest of the first core from Seminary Ridge, uh, but they rolled terribly. Uh, they only had four movement points. 
Um, so they're going to be caught out in the open uh, in the morning. They weren't able to fall further back. Um, although we have uh, the 12th core and we have uh, the 9th core um, ensconced here on Cemetery Hill, Culp's Hill. And then we have um, the 3rd core uh, coming down uh, the Emmitsburg Road. Um, we've got the Excelsior Brigade here um, parked on Cemetery Ridge. Good thing is though in the morning there will be a preponderance of uh, Union, uh, if they're not delayed, uh, Union Corps coming up. So for the Confederates, um, it'll be incumbent on them to really push. Um, Heath's division is sort of behind. Um, they withheld um, that particular attack and took um, a replacement. And then um, Anderson's divisions also. So we'll have to see what things look like um, on July 2nd. That's sort of up in the air, leaning towards the Confederates. Um, but unless they're able to inflict those casualties, they are going to have to take these... Um, Picky hexes, which are the interesting thing about if you don't win an automatic victory and you go to tabulating the normal victory um, points, you roll a die to see how much uh, these particular spots are worth. So you don't, and, and you round it down. So they could be, or have it, so they could be worth anywhere from one to three points. So the Confederates still have their work cut out for them. But yep, that is the uh, end of the first day of the Battle of Gettysburg, July 1st, uh, for the Gettysburg game in GMT's Clash of Giants Civil War. Uh, if you're still with me, um, thanks uh, for tuning in, and um, we'll see you um, for the July 2nd one.